Welcome back guys, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Raspberry Pi to control servos and 360 modded servos, as well as how to 360 mod a stock servo. Let's get right into it. So I've got my Raspberry Pi, a few servos, and a ton of jumper wires. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is uh, create a secondary power source, because these servos draw a little bit too much for the Raspberry Pi to handle. I recommend making a little adapter like this so you can plug your jumper wires right into 5 volt DC. So we'll start by getting that secondary power source right on the breadboard. So the servo has a power, a ground, and a control, and you're going to want to connect your control, usually red, to the 5 volt power in from your secondary power supply. And then the ground, which is usually black, or in this case brown, to the ground from your power supply. So I'm using white for control. Go ahead and connect that to the Raspberry Pi on the pin that you want to use. Uh, here's a little GPIO map if you need it. And then go ahead and bridge that to your breadboard. And then of course link up the control line on your servo to the control line from the Raspberry Pi. Now the problem here is since we use two different power supplies, uh, DC needs to find a common ground between them. So you need to connect the ground from your secondary power supply to the ground on the Raspberry Pi. You can use any marked ground pin. So a servo isn't just like a normal motor that just has a direct power and ground. The servo has to take instructions from the Raspberry Pi using pulse width modulation. So basically we're just going to be sending different frequencies to the control line using a duty cycle. So you don't really have to understand what that is, just understand that uh, these different numbers will coordinate to different degrees of rotation that the servo will position itself to. So this code basically makes it move to several different degrees around its axis of rotation. So let's go ahead and start it up and let me show you what it does. So this servo has about 180 degrees of rotation and the first one puts it right in the middle, the 7.5 duty cycle. Um, from there, we can go to 45 and 90 in each direction. So this code right here will work for any server that has a 50 hertz signal, as specified right here. And I'll post it down below so you can try it on your own. So now let's talk about 360 servos. 360 servos can rotate 360 degrees without stopping, which means that they have no mechanical or electronic stops inside of them. So that means the gear at the top does not have a stop on it and the potentiometer has been bypassed or it does not have a potentiometer. So that also means that it has no idea what degree of rotation it's currently at. It only knows left or right. So now I'm quickly going to show you how to convert a normal servo into a 360 servo. So just a word of caution before you do this to your servo, not all servos can be 360 modded just like this one because the internals actually rely on the potentiometer to stop. So if you bypass the potentiometer, it'll just keep spinning forever. So go ahead and check out your uh, servo's data sheet to see if it is 360 moddable. So you'll need a brand new servo, a lighter, screwdriver, and some pliers. So it's pretty easy, just go ahead and take out the four screws on the bottom. So now you'll be able to slide off the top and you'll see the main gear assembly. So go ahead and take out this gear right here and place it in the top. And we're gonna need to take off this little knob right here on the top gear. So if your gears are plastic, uh, you'll likely be able to cut it off or file it off. In this case, all I need is just some pliers to pop it out. So with the little pin removed, go ahead and set that gear aside. And we're going to focus on this little knob right here that is the potentiometer. So we need this right in the middle in order for it to move left and right. So go ahead and find out where it stops on each side and position it directly in the middle. Go ahead and plug your servo in and make sure that the gears rotate both directions. Perfect. So now with the lighter, we're going to melt the potentiometer head in place. It may also be helpful to file off the excess. So verify that the main gear can spin freely on the axis. 
And now you can go ahead and reassemble the gears. Give the servo a quick test once you're done. And then go ahead and reassemble the case. So now we're good to go and let's go ahead and test the new servo. So as you can see here for the program that specified certain positions for the servo to take, this servo only moves in the direction that the position is relative to the origin. So obviously the advantages of having a servo like this is you can use it for applications that aren't bound to just a flick back and forth, you know. So as far as the program for this is concerned, all you're going to need is a far left command and a far right command. So here I use 1.5 duty cycle and 12.5 duty cycle to move it right and left. So you're only going to be able to control it by the time that it's running and the direction that it's moving. So take a look. That's three seconds right and three seconds left. And of course, setting it to zero will stop it. So I hope you all learned a lot from watching this video. Uh, I didn't really find any good resources on it myself that were all inclusive, so I figured I'd make one. Um, as always, the codes are posted down in the description. And uh, leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I'll see you all later. Thank you.